does. No, not that. How to paint a car. Real nice. Yeah, let's do that. So uh, here's a little known fact. Razor blades were actually invented to get paint runs out of cars. I bet you didn't know that. You didn't know that. Because I just made that up. So I went ahead and repainted the Plymouth Satellite. It's actually a Subaru color. It's called Subaru Hyper Blue, I believe. And today on this video, we're gonna be working on cutting and buffing. I'm gonna show you guys how to remove trash from paint, dirt nibs, paint runs, and orange peel. First things first, to get the car ready for paint, I went ahead and took some 600 grit on my DA sander, sanded the whole car down. Now the paint job, prior to this paint job, I used a single stage acrylic enamel and it was a metallic and I was trying to be big dog status thinking oh man I could just lay down some acrylic enamel and I won't even have to cut and buff it then I started second guessing myself and I said you know what man you haven't painted a, a car at least in a year the right way so you, you probably just need to go ahead and just single base coat clear coat it went back to the paint store bought some clear coat and then I thought to myself Perfect. I can shoot my single stage as a base and then I'll clear cut over it. And then we can cut and buff it afterwards, or at least expect to cut and buff it. I didn't read the data sheet, and the data sheet said to wait it's six hours before clear coating the enamel. And the metallics, since they didn't have enough time to dry, they actually moved around, and that's where we got that blotchiness and striping in the paint. I took these large black trash bags. They fit right over the wheels. If you take a little slit in them, they fit right over the wheels. Now, wax and grease remover. You can go out and buy wax and grease remover. If you're just doing it in your own garage, isopropyl alcohol will kill and destroy any wax and grease. I've done it tons of times. I've never painted a car and used wax or grease remover. I've always used isopropyl alcohol. There, are, I, have, I have had a couple times where I've gotten some fish eyes, but. I think I've, it's only happened about two times. Now check this out. This paint is as close to like a petty blue as I could get, but I wanted it to be a hint darker. It's a Subaru color called Hyper Blue. So I had the guy add just a hint of black to it. You guys will see here in a second, it turned out really awesome. And I have some bad lighting in my shop, but outside, when you pull the car outside, it looks amazing. And it's a lot lighter than it looks on the video. I started out from the top, I did the pillar, and I'm laying this on about medium wet, almost full wet. Second coat, I do a full wet coat. Now here's the issue that I ran into where I had some paint runs. I turned my fluid volume on the gun all the way up to where I had the max amount of fluid coming out, but the air pressure, I had it too low. I had it set around 25 PSI. I probably should have bumped it up a lot more because the paint was actually coming out of the gun speckly. It's like it wasn't atomizing properly. And that caused me to try to lay it on thicker to compensate for that. And that's where, whenever we got a few runs. But overall, it turned out turned out pretty decent. Painting cars really isn't that hard. If I, if I could give my advice to somebody, it would be to not go with a full car. Paint a bumper, paint a fender, get a car that maybe has some patina to it and oh it has a red paint job but the fender's white repaint the fender do a good job on it expecting to sand it down to make it look patinaed and just get a feel for the paint gun you got to get a feel for how the paint flows out what settings you want it to be um there's no real right way to paint if you talk to a guy about painting each painter's mainly going to have most painters are going to have a different way different way they set their gun overlapping a really nice paint job can be achieved with a hundred different techniques me being an, uh, a pretty novice uh, not an expert painter 
I already expect to wet sand and buff. I know there's going to be some runs here and there. There's there's going to be some trash in the paint. I don't have a paint booth. So I, I just expect, you know, you don't get your hopes up. And if you see some dirt in the paint, if you see some issues, just, you know, don't don't beat yourself up at it, about it. Don't stop what you're doing. Just keep going, keep moving, let it dry, come back to it, and then you can fix the problems later. So now I'm mixing my third cup of paint. The first cup of paint covered the entire roof and the entire quarter panel. The second cup of paint did the entire door and the entire fender with a little bit left over. And then my third cup of paint covered the entire hood and the entire uh, passenger fender. So we're looking at about two, a little over two panels, depending on the size of the panels, for one cup of paint. All right, so I put two wet coats on there, and this thing is looking super shiny. There's a lot of dust uh, particles, but we'll be able to take some sandpaper. We'll, we'll sand all that out and we'll buff the car. Oh, here's my main concern. See how bad? I mean, it's this whole thing, there's a giant run giant run front clip is good the hood is good trunk lid's pretty much good i think we can fix them so worst case scenario we may have to re maybe spot paint a couple areas door jams look great <clears throat> i didn't run the door jams but i'm happy with it and i i love this color compared to that other metallic that other metallic looked like crap this is just so much better since it's dry enough, just tacky, I'm gonna go ahead and pull all the tape off of it. That way we don't peel anything back. We got a couple flies too. That's no biggie. When you get a fly in your paint and it's your last coat, just leave it. You can, uh, once it's dry, you can pull the fly off and then you can sand the little legs. Cause usually it's just either the wings or the legs. Sand it down and uh, buff it out. So all the materials that I use on this job I am going to post in the description of this video. They will be Amazon affiliate links. So I do get paid if you buy, say the spray gun or a block sander or a DA sander or whatever. We are going to need two razor blades, a flexible block, 1500 grit sandpaper, a paint stick. You're gonna need more than one size. You're gonna take a paint stick and you're gonna cut it down into all different sizes. I'm using 600 grit. It cuts fast. You just gotta be real careful. Some water with soap or glass cleaner, whatever, it doesn't matter. So the first thing you wanna do is cut the heads off of the runs. You're gonna want a lot of razor blades. I actually bought a pack of 50 and then ended up buying another pack of 50 for 100 razor blades total. Cause you wanna make sure these razor blades are extremely sharp. If they're dull at all, you're gonna dig into your panel and you're gonna leave gouges in your panel. After you cut the run flat, you wanna take your razor blade on the panel and come sideways. If the run is going up and down, you wanna tilt your razor blade sideways, not perfectly left and right or up and down, kinda of come at an angle. And that's how you're gonna be able to scrape them all smooth. You don't wanna to go too far, but you want to get it just far enough to where the sandpaper takes care of the rest of the run. Just so you have an idea of how big that run is, that's after I scraped it down. Like all this area, you could barely even see it. It just looked kind of like a, uh, it's more like a paint sag. But like I said, I put a lot of paint around this run, so we got a lot of material to work with. All the runs are out. Feels very, very nice and smooth. You can even look down the side. See how it looks flat from this direction? Look down the side, you can see it's all smooth. Put some 1500 on our Dura block. Sand it off, and we will have a flat panel. It's that easy.
Okay. This is after sand with 1500 grit. All you paint experts, this is for you. Well, that's it right there. I mean, it literally just looks like a factory orange peel finish. If a novice painter like me can sand out runs that are that bad in paint, I mean, it was running all the way from the top all the way down to the bottom. Look at that. Took me about, I don't know, 35, 40 minutes. Another 20 minutes. Probably about an hour or so. There are some areas like right here I need to sand a little bit better, but I'll spot sand that. 1500 grit and some Malco, Malco heavy cut. Boy, tell me you wouldn't drive this car around with a straight face. All right guys, I'll check you on the next one.